I'm sorry, dude. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, but today, we can just jump right into today's video. Emma Walker was a 14-year-old in 2014 living in Knoxville, Tennessee. As a freshman, Emma made it onto the cheerleading squad and she loved every minute of it. When I tell you this girl dedicated her life to cheerleading, she dedicated her life to cheerleading. It was one of her favorite things. A lot of her friends were on the squad. So getting to cheer at every football game on Friday nights was like the highlight of her freshman year. Eventually, Emma caught the eye of a junior, Riley um, Gall, who was a wide receiver on the team. Riley was raised by his mom and grandparents. He was a top student and his friends described him as a jokester. One of his friends said that he was a little bit on the nerdy side and that he kind of kept to himself. Riley liked playing video games, just kind of your average, you know, teen dude. When Emma's parents first met Riley, they had only good things to say about him. Jill Walker said he came in very polite, very nice in the beginning. He was very likable. I thought he was a very nice looking young man, well mannered. Her um, dad, Mark Walker, said. We would let them have some supervised visitation. He could come over to the house. They would meet up after football games to eat and things like that. Riley didn't really talk to Emma's friends and they thought that maybe he was just shy, but it wasn't long before they realized that he was actually trying to isolate her from her friends. They found him to be very controlling over Emma. Riley got super clingy and he wouldn't let her do certain things. He would even tell her what she could and could not wear, which like really concerned Emma's mom. That was one of the biggest red flags for Jill was the fact that he would tell her when she had to go and change and she couldn't wear something out of the house. Over the next two years, they would constantly be on again, off again, and have really dramatic fights over text or Snapchat. Snapchat's a hard one to fight over because, you know, like if you're sending photos and stuff, it's there and gone, so. But that's a very, like, high school kind of thing, I think. Then Riley started waiting for Emma outside the supermarket where she worked. He would sit and wait for her for hours. He would just wait for her shift to be done so he could see her. Some of Emma's friends voiced their concerns, but she would just sort of brush them off, you know? Like, when your friends say that they don't like someone, you think, oh, they probably just don't like that I've been hanging out with him more than them. Not a big deal. And I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a high school romance, you know? According to Emma's friends, Riley became aggressive, sending her Snapchat messages that said, I hate you, I hate everything about you, and you're the biggest bitch I've ever come in contact with. One message in particular alarmed her mom. You're dead to me. I'll check the obituary. F you, Riley wrote. We on one occasion saw one that said, I'll see your name in the obituary, Jill said. He wrote that to her and we questioned him about it and he said, I was just angry and that's when I started to get many more red flags. Eventually, Emma's parents took her phone away and banned Riley from their home. However, Riley gave Emma an iPod touch and she texted him through Wi-Fi, um, her friend Seth said. Riley was quick to apologize after he would send these horrible, horrible messages. Jill told her daughter how she should speak up, like, several times, like, that she should say something to him. But as you do that with a teenager, the more you butt heads, the more she's going to think he's in the right, she said, because he had a way of isolating her and making her think that he was the only one. By the fall of 2016, they were still dating, even though Riley graduated and he was a freshman at a nearby college, and it's rumored that Riley was dating a classmate at college, as well as Emma. She allegedly found photos that he was tagged in with another girl and that they were like photographed together and so that was another really big source of tension in their relationship around halloween emma was grounded and had to stay home other than going to school and cheerleading this made her begin to act like herself once again and she sort of realized that she deserved better than how riley had been treating her Emma's friends and family were happy about this, um, but of course Riley was taking it like super hard. He threatened to hurt himself and at one point he took a bunch of Vicodin pills with alcohol. On Friday, November 18th, 2016, Emma was allowed to go to a gathering at a friend's house and around 11.30 p.m. she pulled one of her friends aside and told them that she was getting these weird texts saying to go outside alone if she didn't want to see a loved one hurt. 
The text kept threatening that if she didn't go outside to her car alone, someone she loved would get hurt. And they even said like, oh, I'll send um, um, like a voice recording of them in pain because she said, oh, I don't believe you. Like, I'm going to call the cops if you don't just leave me alone. So that's when they said, I'll send a voice recording of someone that you love getting hurt. And like, it's really going to suck for him. Her friend thought that maybe it was just like another one of their friends that was playing a joke on her super cruel joke but i guess when they went outside they saw someone laying in the ditch here it was riley he was acting confused and claimed that he was kidnapped and someone had dropped him off like he was laying face down so when he got up he was like what where am i huh what happened like just acting all confused but it's like boy come on we know emma told him to leave her alone and that made him feel really dejected Riley later told another friend that he had been kidnapped, but they didn't believe it. And then, like, they also told him that he should call 911 and report it to the cops, you know, if this really did happen. And Riley was like, no, no cops. I don't want any cops involved. The next morning when Emma went home, she said that there was a stranger at the doorstep. She texted Riley, I'm home alone and someone in all black walked down my street and came to my door and rang the doorbell over and over again. I thought I was going to die. I hate you, but I need you right now. He responded, I'm coming, I'm speeding, just give me a minute. When Jill got home and she saw her daughter and Riley standing in the front yard, this made her very upset and she told him that he needed to leave and he tried to say like, oh, I was just here helping Emma, like she was afraid. And Jill was not happy with Emma that she was in contact again with Riley, much less that she had him over at the house. Around 6 a.m. on Monday, November 21st, 2016, Jill said that she went into Emma's room, but she couldn't wake her. I said her name, I didn't hear anything, I bumped her leg, didn't hear anything, and then looked at her face and I realized, and checked for a pulse and I couldn't find anything. I don't remember a whole lot from that. I know I called 911. I just tried to make my daughter, I just tried to wake my daughter for school, Jill told the operator. She's 16. You said she's non-responsive, the operator asked. Yeah, Jill said, sobbing. Here, Jill's dad said that in the middle of the night, he thought he woke up because of a loud noise, but he wasn't totally sure. So he got up and he went and he checked on uh, Emma, but he was like, yeah, I looked in and she was sleeping. It was fine. He goes, I think I just jolted myself awake for no reason. Here, it was... A whole lot worse than he could have ever thought that it was that night. When the authorities arrived to the scene, they noticed a small hole in Emma's wall that appeared to be a bullet hole, and they found two shell casings outside of the house. They ended up finding two bullet holes in the wall, so one of which was the fatal shot that hit Emma right below her left ear. Everyone kept telling investigators that it was definitely Riley, and the investigators even said, you know, we keep hearing that it's him, so... We should probably bring him in. So eventually they did bring Riley in and then they interrogate, interrogated, inter interrogated him for about two hours. And Riley, like weirdly enough, never referred to Emma by her name. He always referred to her as the girl, which was like super strange because they dated for two years. And at one point he even said, what's this about? Like, am I a suspect? And they were like, mm, should you be? So... Nothing came out of the interrogation, like he didn't admit to anything, so they just, you know, had to let him go. But eventually, two of Riley's friends came forward saying that Riley had wanted them to help him dispose of his grandfather's gun because he was afraid of being connected to the crime, even though he had nothing to do with it, according to him. The two friends agreed to help him throw it off of a bridge into a river, but they were wearing a wire and the cops rushed the group right before Riley could get rid of the murder weapon and the gun matched the shell casings found outside of the walker's home. And so Riley was convicted of first degree murder and he was sentenced to life in prison. Now keep in mind when all this happened, Riley was only 18 years old. So... However, you know, a murder's a murder. And I guess in Tennessee, if like a murder charge comes up, it's an automatic life sentence. So that is what Riley got. But that is the end of my story today. Um, let me know how you guys feel about this case in the comments down below. I'm sure you've heard of this one. It was fairly popular, but it just popped up on my TikTok feed again. So I thought it would be kind of fun to, or not fun, but interesting and 
good to keep Emma's story alive, I think, because all of her friends and family, of course, had nothing but good things to say about her and they don't want her to be forgotten either. So that is it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you back here on Monday with another True Crime Courier video. Bye guys.